Hey guys, welcome to this live by IntelliPath. I am Ram and I'll be covering the topic in today's live. So today we'll be discussing how to become a database administrator. Now before we get into it guys, please subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you don't miss any of our future updates. Also one more thing guys, if you stay till the end of the live, then I have a surprise for you. Okay, now let's take a quick look at our agenda. So the first thing we'll have, we'll have an introduction to database administration. So our whole point of this live is to learn how to become a database administrator. So I will give you a few steps. Well, basically I will give you the fundamentals and you can then go ahead and try it on your own. So first introduction, we'll have an introduction to database administration. What it is, why do we need to learn it? Who are database administrators? Then in the second uh, topic, then we'll discuss what are the different skills a database administrator must have as, uh, to become better. Then we'll discuss all the different roles and responsibilities of a database administrator. Then we'll discuss is database administration the right path for you. And then finally, we will conclude by having um, by telling you what kind of learning path can you take when you're starting to learn about database administration. Okay, so this is the agenda. Now we'll start with the introduction. Okay, so let's introduce what database administration is. But before that, let's get to know what database is and what DBMS is. Now, I know a lot of you may be freshers, a lot of you may be people who are looking to change the field in which you're working. Maybe you're working in the support field and you are you know, satisfied with the work you're doing and you want to become, you know, choose a better field. So that's why you clicked on this slide. So I have, uh, I'm assuming that not everyone knows what a database is or what DBMS is. So let me start with that. So a database is basically a storage location. Like let's take an example. If you had a hard drive and in that hard drive, you're storing a lot of data, like your personal information. So then that hard drive can be construed as a database. Similarly, when businesses operate, right, they produce a lot of data, like customer data, their internal operations data, and all of this data needs to be stored somewhere. And that's why we have databases. These databases are used to store and manage large amounts of data, especially for big organizations. So if you ever thought about Amazon or Microsoft or Walmart or Flipkart, or you know any other big organization, all of them have databases, like multiple diff databases, which they use to store multiple different types of data. So what is DBMS? So we know what a database is. It's basically a storage place for storing data. So DBMS is basically like uh, different sets of programs that basically help you to retrieve this data, manipulate this data and represent this data. So mm, you know that you already have your data inside your database, but you want to you know, mess with it or you want to use it. Then you need to use DBMS. DBMS for form is database management systems. These systems will help you to take this data from the DB or the database and then manipulate it, basically change it. And once you've changed it or you've you know selected the data, then you can do whatever you want with it. And you can represent it, you can give it to who, whoever wants it, etc. etc. Now today almost every organization has morphed itself into a data-driven organization because you have to do that. In today's world, data is power. If you have, it's like saying information is knowledge, right? like information is knowledge, right? I mean, like information is power. So in the same way, data is power these days. Any big organization that has a wide reach is collecting data and is using that data to make better decisions. That's where data analytics comes in. So to store all of this data, people have come devised multiple different methods to store the data. And this is like database comes in. And this is why every organization will have a database and a DBMS and, you know, several roles associated with handling all of these things. Okay, so now we know what a database is and what a DBMS is. Now let's talk about what data administration is. So data administration refers to the whole set of activities performed by a uh, database administrator to ensure that the database is always available when needed or the main task of a database administrator is to maintain the integrity of database. So uh, in database administration, if we were to define it again, you're basically taking care of the database. That's administration. It's not the exact words as a system administrator, but in a way you are administrating the database. You're managing it. You're making sure that it's available. You're making sure that's healthy. You're monitoring it all the time. It's like a baby. Database is like a baby. And in database administration, you basically take care of it. 
So who is a database administrator? So a database administrator is a person who basically performs all these roles like taking care of the database. He is the one who, uh, a database administrator is the person who maintains a successful database environment by directing or performing all related activities to keep the data secure and to keep the data stable, maintain its integrity. So a database administrator will do everything in his right to make sure that the database's data is available at all times to whoever wishes it and he makes sure that this data is secure. So we'll discuss all these different roles of a database administrator later in this life. So if you wanted a basic idea of who a database administrator is, he is a person who takes care of databases or in sense, he takes care of the data. All right, so let's now discuss why is there a need or what is the need of a database administrator? So a database is administrator is very, it's a very important role because you know, it helps in keeping the data stable. It makes sure that the data is always accessible. It keeps the data here. He helps keep the data secure and he helps in planning future endeavors. All right, so this is why you need a database administrator. These are all the different important things you need to do with your databases. And let's discuss the salary of a database administrator. So if you're looking to change your field, or if you're a fresher who wants to look at a lucrative field where you can earn a lot of money, database administrator is again that kind of field. But you might need a lot of, you might need some experience when you're getting into this field. You cannot just start as a database administrator straight away. You will have to, um, you know, slowly, slowly approach this particular field. But there are some companies that do accept uh, junior database administrators who are just come out of college and uh, want to work on database. So if you looked at this average salaries in India, let's focus on India right now. In India, a junior database administrator will be earning around five lakhs per annum. So as a fresher, that's pretty good salary. Okay, it's not as impressive as IIT in salary where they're earning 80 lakhs per annum, but not everyone can expect that much. So as a fresher, five lakhs per annum is pretty good. And if you get gain some experience, you keep on going through this field. If you're after two, three years, you'll earn around 10 lakhs per annum. And that's only after two, three years, you'll become a senior database administrator. But once you're in this field for long uh, term, maybe you're in this field for 10 years more, you'll be earning around 60, 80, the same as anyone else has been in this particular field. So it pays off in the end. That's what matters. Even a junior database administrator in US will earn $70,000. I mean, it's a lot more, but then the standards of living in America are a lot more. And a senior database administrator living in US earns around $100,000, which is a six figure salary. So can you imagine that? Earning a six figure salary, that's like a lot of money and you'll have comfort for the rest of your life. All right, so that's discussing the salary of a database administrator. Now let's move on. Let's discuss the different skills a database administrator must have. All right, so the first skill is having excellent communication skills. Since you'll be dealing with a database, uh, you'll, be dis you'll be communicating with a lot of different teams. You'll be you know, communicating with the operations team, with the infrastructure team, with the development team, the database designing team. There are so many different teams you'll be talking to. Since you're the administrator, you have all of the control. And since you have all of the control, you make sure that uh, you're the person responsible for making sure that this particular person gets the access because you're the admin. So in that way, you have to keep a good interaction or keep your uh, relationship with other teams very professional and have very good communication skills. You have an idea, you want to discuss it, or you have some thoughts you want to discuss, you need to be able to uh, tell them very well. Then problem solving. Obviously, as a database admin, you'll be, you know, trying to fix a lot of crashes or collapses or any problem that comes up. So you need to be able to problem solve. You need to think on your feet and you need to do it a bit fast also. I mean, this is with, this is true with any job, even with a developer, you'll need to have problem solving skills. So if you think that you can solve problems, then this is a good job for you. 
then you need to have good familiarity with query languages. Basically, no SQL. SQL is very, very, very important if you're working with database. So if you think you can't work with SQL, then just don't think about this, look for something else. But if you think you're good at SQL, or if you think that you can get better in SQL, then this is really good for you. Uh, practice more, learn more, get really good with SQL, try out hacker rank, try many questions, practice, 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 become very good at SQL, and then you can get a really good job in database. And if you're good at database al uh, SQL already, as a college student, then you won't have a problem getting a junior database administrator job. Then we, then you need to know basic understanding of Windows or Linux. Since you're going to be an administrator, you're going to be handling the database as a whole. So you're not going to be creating the database or you're not going to be developing it. You're not going to be designing it or developing the database, but you'll be handling it. So to handle it, you need to know on which particular host this particular database has been established. So if it's a Linux based server on which the database is running, you need to know how Linux works, what are the different commands that are necessary to handle database. And what are, if you're working with Windows based OS, then you need to know the similar commands to work with the database on that particular server. So make sure you're good with Linux and Windows, at least the basics. If you have a basic understanding of how to use either of these uh, uh, operating systems, then you're good to go. You always learn more on the job. So if you are scared that you don't know a lot, it's all right. Not everyone knows everything in the start. They learn slowly, slowly. They gain more experience. Then you need to have good knowledge about database design and theory. Okay, you're not gonna be designing the database, but you still need to know about the database design because you'll be handling it and you need to know the ins and outs of the particular thing you're working handling. So let's take an example like, if you had a baby and uh, you know you want to take care of it, well, it's not a really good anal analogy. Uh, let's think about um, okay. You have you have to handle a car. So a person who knows the ins and outs of a car needs to know how the car works because otherwise he can't maintain it himself. If his job is to maintain that car then he needs to know the ins and outs of that car. Similarly, if you are going to be handling this database, you need, you need to know all the different concepts that are involved in creation of this database, the design of the database, and then database theory also. Like, how does it work? You can't just go into database administration and not know about how databases work. How is the data stored? How is the data indexed? How do you query everything? Those kind of details. You need to know them when you are working as a database administrator. Then you need to have knowledge in DBMS. Now you can pick any DBMS software and then have some kind of basic knowledge in it. So you just use MySQL or MSSQL, PostgreSQL, just have some kind of knowledge in them. And then again, knowledge in the tools that are associated with the DBA or a database administrator. Now there are a few tools, but the thing with the tools is they're a catch. You can't just know one tool because, you know, in industry, there are a lot of tools being used. So as you can see, there are a lot of tools listed here. And the best way to be a good database administrator is to know the basics and fundamentals. If you know the basics and fundamentals, you can jump across, adapt to any tool that is listed over here with a lot of ease. Because they mostly work in the same manner. It's just that they have a few specifications that differ. Like most, a lot of companies use, like Oracle database is one of the most popular database that is used out there. So if you do know how to use it, then it's a plus. But even if you don't know how to use it, you're good at MySQL, but you're applying for a job in a company that uses Oracle, they, you know, they won't look past the fact that you know MySQL already. They, they will first and foremost hand, assume that you know how to work with SQL and all the database concepts thoroughly. Then they will look at what kind of tool you know. And they might even get impressed by your knowledge in database concepts and theories before you even look at the tool that you know. But if you do know the tool that they're using, then it's a good plus. Then you have, uh, so let me talk about the different tools. They're like Oracle Database, MySQL Workbench, Dell Spotlight, which is a monitoring tool. Then you have uh, SCOM, that is System Center Operations Manager that is made by Microsoft, that is used to manage the databases. Then you have Microsoft SQL Server, and then Toad. All these different tools are basically used to manage the data sets or manage the data that is available in the databases. All right, so let's move on. Let's look at the roles and responsibilities of a database administrator or database administration. 
Now, this is the most important thing because this is what's going to be forming your fundamentals and basics as a database administrator, okay? Fine, now let's look at them. So there are a few of them, let's discuss them one by one. So one of the first responsibilities of a database administrator is to, you know, be able to, uh, is to make sure that the, there is database availability. Now, database availability, let's talk about that. We've talked about this uh, like a few minutes back, but let me tell you again. So when you have your application, this application, uh, let's take an example. If you have like Swiggy or if you have uh, Amazon, uh, yeah, so if you take Amazon's example again, so they handle a millions and millions of interactions every day and they need to store this data somewhere and they use databases for this or they use some other method so they need they just store that data and this uh, the app for amazon uh, it needs to access this data anytime it wants the access here is important because if the application cannot access the data if the amazon app cannot access its own database then it can't provide the customers the necessary information if you have like different sell, uh, you know, items, product items on your, uh, like if you look up a particular, uh, if you look up a new laptop on Amazon, you see a lot of list of different laptops, but different sellers. Now this application, this Amazon.in application or Amazon.cab application cannot display these items unless it has access to the database. And this is where database availability comes in. As a database administrator, you need to you'll need uh, you will need to make sure that this database is available at all times, so that there is no issue when the application wants to access this data. So basically, data availability. Without the database, the application can't remain online, and it is one of the key responsibilities of a DBA. So as a DBA, this will be one of your most key uh, important role or your responsibility to make sure that the data is available. Then data backup. Now, you know what happens, right? When your hard drive crashes and uh, you have a lot of data on it, you have a lot of photos, like childhood photos, and you can't access it because your you know, data hard drive has crashed and you forgot to back it up because you thought, you know, what's the use? I don't want to back it up. Backing up will take a lot of time. And uh, I'm pretty sure that my hard drive won't crash, but it does crash. So you regret that moment, but companies already know this. They need, they always, you know, do a risk analysis. So in that backing up the data comes in handy because you're backing the data up. So if something happens to the database that is irreparable at that particular moment, then you have the data backed up at least at till some, some point. You can't always just back up uh, instantly all the data. You'll have like weekly backs, backups on monthly backups, uh, et cetera, et cetera. It is important to make a backup of existing database every single day. I mean, every single day depends on where you're working. Uh, some companies do it differently. It all depends on that. All right, so then database restore. Restoring is a process of building a database from a backup copy. So backup is done to protect the data from data corruption, hardware, uh, media failure, or natural catastrophe. Time and again, database administrators are required to restore the database from a backup to practice restoring process. So because you know, you'd be practicing it uh, beforehand because if something really happens, if there is a fire in your office and you hadn't backed it up to the cloud, then you'll be in trouble because the data is gone, the company is going to be, going to be in loss because you can't access the data, etc. If the backup has been done, then they can restore this backup and use the data. Then comes database design. Now, this isn't very important for an administrator because this is again designing a database to be uh, efficient and uh, cost effective. But if a DBA knows how to, you know, how a database has been designed, then they can always consult the developer. Or the thing is, if you know database design, uh, then when the developer is creating a new database, then you can always consult them because as a database administrator, you'll have some business uh, logic also. You'll know some business logic. And accordingly, you can consult with the developer and inform him how it has to be created, especially in early designing processes. Then data move. So a lot of organizations uh, you know, move the data here and there for particular purposes. 
So as a data, uh, database administrator, you need to know how you can move this data from one particular location to another. If you're migrating to a cloud, suppose you used, you're working in a company that has been established for a pretty long time and they're still using on-premise hardware. Uh, for database uh, servers instead of using clouds like a lot of recent companies do. And your company has uh, a new CEO and he thinks that the new direction is to make everything cloud, which is true. So you need to be able to know how you're gonna move this data. Obviously, this is just a very specific example. You'll need to know how to move it in, uh, in different scenarios. A, a lot of uh, frequent requests for data moving can come from uh, the development team. They want the data database to be moved from production data, uh, production environment to the development environment so that it can be tested and you know, so that the application can be tested using the database uh, for all possibilities. Then comes data upgrade. Now we know how everything gets upgraded these days. You get Windows, uh, you know, you get a new Windows every other week. Well, that's an, that's an exaggeration. It's every other four years, but in at least in software like your applications for your phones, they get updated every other week. Some applications even every other day. So upgrades are not something new to our today's market. Everything gets upgraded, and so do a lot of databases, uh, software for those databases, or the OSs on which the, those databases are running. So a new release. So for example, a new version of the OS is released and the notification to upgrade comes in, then you have to go ahead and upgrade that particular server to the new OS. And the newer version covers all or most of the problems which the older version hadn't. So you don't have to worry about the old problems, but it may add new problems. So you need to think about that. So similarly, like uh, again, in data, as a database administrator, you're required to upgrade the database to a newer version also. This can't just be the with the OS, you will be the other components of the database also. All right, let's talk about database patching. Now, patching is basically is a concept where not everything is perfect. Even after you upgrade something, it's not perfect because it comes with a new bug that the testers were not able to find. So you need to be able to patch your database also. Then we can talk about database security, which is again a very important role of a database administrator. Security is a top priority for any company. Your data is your asset and you need to protect it as a uh, you know, and you need to make sure it's as secure as possible so that no one else can take it. Because you can use that data to make better decisions and increase your profits, all right? So a DBA or a database administrator should always work with the security team to make sure, to ensure they are in compliance and the DB is secure for both external attacks and internal attacks. Creating a database user account with minimum privilege is one way to protect. And obviously you'll be having a lot of user access. So you need to make sure that you don't make any human errors there. Uh, give the access to those who only need it, etc. Then comes capacity planning. Now capacity planning is basically talking about growth, future growth. Now, as if you took an example, you, suppose you had a food delivering company and you're seeing an exponential growth. So as a DBA, you need to be ready for this kind of exponential growth. You need to plan out how you can increase the disk space, the memory, the processing power, the bandwidth to support your company's growth. It is always good to overestimate than underestimate. Because if you overestimate, you can, you know, you won't have any problems because you've uh, made sure that there won't be any errors. But in underestimating, you know, if you underestimate the bandwidth or the memory you need, you won't be, you know, you lose a lot of um, data here and there. So it's always better to overestimate. Well, that's just a suggestion for you guys. So this is again another responsibility of a database manager to plan for the future. And then comes database monitoring. Now this is again important. Monitoring is done to ensure that the database is running without any problems. Now you monitor everything. You normally, as a in these days, everything is monitored. An application will be monitored at all of its components. It's database, it's backend, it's the servers, the API, everything will be monitored. The performance will be monitored. You know, their health will be monitored, everything. So monitoring is done to ensure that the database is running without any problems. Normally, monitoring a DB, um, you can run complex queries, uh, building, uh, uh, like, normally you can monitor the 
DB when complex queries are being run or indexes are being built or data is being moved. So you make sure that everything is being performed perfectly. Monitoring can be done to identify any problems or uh, any problem queries. So this is again, you know, uh, during monitoring, you can test a few things out also. Now, each database comes with a tool to monitor it. Now, depends on what kind of database you're using. If you're using Oracle, it is a suite of, you know, it has a suite of tools you can use. So it will obviously have its own monitoring tool also. And same with the MySQL and the MS SQL, Microsoft SQL, etc., etc. Then last responsibility will be error log review. So error logs are where the logs are spit out and every database management system has it. So, you know, everything produces logs. Your application produces logs. Your system produces logs. Your server produces logs. So similarly, even database produce logs. And if you want to debug, if you want to see how your, or what's happened to your database, suppose it crashed and you want to figure out what happened to it, then you will go through the logs. And uh, you'll have a separate tool for that also. But what's important here is that you need to review the logs and figure out what the problem is. Where, why did the crash happen? Find the source of the problem, fix it, and then plan for future so that this problem never happens again. So these were the responsibilities of a database administrator. I hope you guys understood. All right, so let's look at some job descriptions over here. So we have Ericsson. Now Ericsson is a very big company, so let's look at the job description here. So we can see that uh, you need to be able to install, configure, and upgrade Oracle servers, servers, Oracle server software and related products, good understanding of RAC uh, and its services, understanding active and passive, active, active, well, different OS, few important commands to check with the server load partitioning. So you need to know what are the different OS is. You need to know indexing, which is an important concept of database. You need to work with very big databases, 100 plus TV, etc., etc. And key qualifications, if you look at that, you can see a good knowledge in physical database design. So they need you to know the design of the database. Like I said, ins and out of the database. You need to know that as a database administrator. A good understanding of underlying operating system. So on which operating system it's working on, you suppose it's working on Linux or Windows, you need to know how to use those particular operating, operating systems well. Then uh, great interpersonal uh, skills, that means you need to have good communication skills. Uh, again, I'm repeating this, as a database administrator, you need to be able to communicate everything properly because you'll be at the center of a lot of problems. And if you can't communicate things properly, a few more errors can happen. So you need good communication skills and excellent problem solving approach again that's a part of every job description you need to know problem solving and work as a part of the team and provide 24 7 support when required so you need to be on call sometimes and you need to work with the team in synergy so that was ericsson as you can see uh, there are a lot of concepts you might not get in the start itself but if you take a certification or you get to get very knowledgeable in handling databases then you will get to understand all this uh, also, you will need some experience. You can't. Uh, this is a j this job profile actually is for a person who has some kind of job. He ha he has had a lot of experience for at least two three years in this particular field. And don't worry, you get paid accordingly. Also, let's take another uh, look. We have Capgemini over here, which is uh, another MNC. So in this, the requirements are infrastructure specialist in Oracle database server, installing and creating 10G, 11G databases according to OFA model, installing and managing Oracle 10G, 11G RAC databases. So as you can see, a lot of companies are here are using Oracle as their database servers database. And there are different versions of it and how to work with them. You need to know that. Now, again, uh, need to get some experience, otherwise, uh, no, I mean, people don't usually take freshers and these job descriptions, as you can see, are for people with a lot of experience. Like, as you can see here, it's four to six years. So uh, around this time, you'll be uh, earning a lot of money and you'll have a lot of this knowledge already because with experience comes a lot of knowledge also, uh, you know. Anyways, let's move on. So these are the job descriptions. All right, so let's discuss this. Is database administration right for you? So after me talking for 20 minutes or so, what did you get? What kind of idea did you get? Do you think it's right for you? I mean, you might be a fresher or you might be someone who's looking to change or you might be someone who's just watching this while eating because you know they just wanna do something. 
Well, think about it. If you think database administration is right for you, after I discuss all the skills, all the responsibilities, the salary, why it's important, if you think it's right for you, then go ahead and follow your, you know, follow the direction you've created for yourself. And uh, if you want to get into it, I'll be providing a learning path in a few minutes, okay? If you do not still get what you want to do, if you're still not sure, if you if you if you don't understand what a database administrator does still, or if you don't know if it's the right career path for you, then don't worry. We here at IntelliPath, we provide a, a kind of like counseling. Like it's, it's not counseling, but it's more like career advising. So if you're a person who needs some advising in their career, then go ahead and call us at these numbers. If you're from India, this is the number over here uh, in the left. And if you're from US, this is the number in the right. Go ahead, call us. We will give you a free session where you can just talk to a career advisor. To, uh, talk about what you like. Like if you, maybe you like uh, SQL, but you're not sure if DB is correct for you. Maybe you want to become a developer or a designer. Then you can talk to us and we will help you figure out what you actually want to do, okay? All right, so let's move on. So a learning path for database administration. If you wanna, if you think you can do this, then this could be a learn. The, this is the learning path for you. So first, you'll need to know how to install databases. So if you're working with Oracle, then you need to install it and configure it. You need to know that, and you need to know SQL. Now SQL is very important. Again, uh, one more uh, advice for you guys. If you're still not sure what kind of path you wanna take, my suggestion for you is choose SQL. What I mean by choosing SQL is take SQL up, learn, learn, learn. Practice it as much as you can. Because SQL forms the core of every database role or career or path. If you, if you talk to anyone, who's been in this field for like four to six years, they'll be very good. Doesn't matter what role they're choosing, they'll be very, very good at SQL. Now, the SQL is a query language, which is used to query all the data there is in the database. So just open SQL up. You can type in SQL in Telepath. We have a free course, uh, we have a free course uh, online on our channel here. You can use it, learn it, and then you know go to Hacker Rank, do all the questions on SQL there. Or if you're still not satisfied, then take up a few projects. We here at Intelpath provide a lot of projects. You can choose them. So make sure that you're good at SQL. If you think you want to go into the database field, then choose SQL. But if you're not sure about database itself, call us, okay? All right, then we talk about the database concepts. So you know how to install and configure database. You're very good at SQL now. And uh, once you're done with that, you need to be very good at all the database concepts. How to design it, what is the database theory, what is indexing, all those things. You need to be very good at them. Well, not very good, so you need to know them, at least the basics and fundamentals. To become, to go into the entry level of a database administrator or database domain itself, you need to know the basic fundamentals of database concepts, okay? All right, then practice, practice, practice. So this is the mantra you should be doing with everything. Don't worry, if you feel like you don't have any talent or uh, if you feel like, you know, you're not that good at studies or if you're not that good at academics, but you know you have some kind of skill you want to pursue, you can always do it. People who practice practice always become better at that particular thing. So just choose one thing that you like, keep on practicing on that particular thing. Doesn't matter SQL, this is life advice for you. If, if you like, you know, if you want to play cricket, then keep on practicing, you know, you'll eventually get better at it, all right? So follow this mantra, practice, practice. And again, online training. So let's talk about, you know, when you go for an uh, interview, or how will people actually look at, what are the things they will look at? So the thing is, uh, even though you might be a fresher, or if you're a person who's just in school, they want you to have at least some kind of degree. I mean, like in CS background. Like if you have a degree in CS background, you'll be preferred over those who don't. But don't be discouraged if you don't have a degree in CS. If you are from EC or mechanical background, that doesn't matter it, uh, if you are experienced in the particular field or if you have done good enough projects, then people will still take you. Actually, they will definitely take you if you have good projects and good experience if you do the interview well, okay? Uh, but if you don't have a degree in CS or if you don't have a proper degree at all, 
then you what you can do is you can try out online certifications and diplomas or you can just get a diploma in this particular thing and online certification can be very helpful so i'll talk about what kind of certification we provide if you're looking for uh, online certification then don't worry we do provide one and we will help you out at every step okay all right so how you can start so you can check out our blogs we have a lot of blogs on this particular topic or you can check out a channel on our channel we have a lot of free content on this particular thing well it's not free like uh, if you want to learn more then you'll definitely have to put a lot of effort into it well what you can do is you can come to our website so this is our website over here and i've typed in here already dba database administrator you have a lot of different courses here if you want to become an oracle dba or a ms sql dba then we do provide those particular courses as you can see we have instructor led training as well as self paced training or like videos and we have a lot of exercises and projects similar with ms sql we have instructor led training and self paced videos also so if i go to oracle dba you can see a lot of things over here so if i looked at what will be taught to you you can see the core dba concepts which is very important you need to know the basics and fundamentals then role of a database administrator you will be taught all of these things again like you know in more detail then you'll learn about sql and pl sql concepts then the physical and logistic structure of database introduction to table space configuring managing oracle network so all the important things that you need to know to become a database administrator for oracle and as you can see with the jds i provided you that a lot of companies look for oracle database administrator or if you're looking for a niche field you want to go for a ms sql server dba then we do provide that also i mean it's not a niche field a lot of people use ms sql also so choose which one you want or if you are not sure about it call our course advisors or our career advisors and we will help you out okay guys and uh, if you want to be taught by actual uh, industry veterans we have instructor led training in instructor led training you will talk to the instructor the instructor will help you out with the doubts you have he will clear all the doubts you have and uh, you know he will give you all the industry idea about how everything works okay so once you get the certification it should be a very good boost to your resume that you have a certification on this particular uh, topic in this case dba as a database administrator all right so that was it guys and whoever is waited till the end or you know who people who just joined in the middle and we watched it till the end this is the surprise you basically get a youtube 30 code on all of our courses so it's a flat 30% off you apply this code and you will get flat 30% off on all our courses you just have to visit intelpath.com type in uh, dba choose the particular course you want to choose then uh, apply this offer code and buy the course all right well guys so thank you so much for watching i hope i helped you in some way i will see you guys in the next live